sixth aspect of the apostolic vision from Paul's letter to the Ephesians that I want to share with you today is that there is one new man. The vision of one new man. It's a deep mystery. It's powerful. And it's written in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16, where the Apostle Paul writes, For he, Christ himself, is our peace, who has made both one. This is talking about both Jew and Gentile. He has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the hatred. That is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. So there is one new man from both Jew and Gentile, one new man from the two, created in himself, in Christ Jesus. There is now one new man, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both, to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. No more separation between Jew and Gentile. No more separation. No more divide between tribes, tongues, peoples and nations. No more divide in Christ between colors of skin, nationalities, cultural identity, cultural heritage, ancestry. We are all called out of what our identity was in the flesh to now be members of one body, one new man created in Christ Jesus. So Jesus Christ has created in himself one new man. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 16 and 17, the Apostle Paul writes about this new creation. And he says, therefore, from now on, in verse 16, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 17, he says, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. We don't regard each other based on skin color, culture, nationality, ancestry. We do not regard anyone according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ according to the flesh. And many these days are making a big point of, what, of who Christ was according to the flesh. And it's important. We know that he came. He was from the lineage of David. He was from the tribe of Judah. He was of the descendant that he is the seed of Abraham. And so according to the flesh, he was a Jew. But according to his very nature, he's God. His nature is God, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. He came in the flesh as a man. And according to his humanity, he was a Jew. But according to his nature, he is God. And that's why he is able to create in himself one new man. Because we are now no longer to live in the flesh. We are no longer in Adam. But for those of us who have believed on Jesus Christ, being and received him and been born again and have been baptized into Christ, we are now of a totally different nature, of a heavenly origin, not earthly anymore. We were in Adam, who was a living being, but now we are in the second Adam. We're in the last Adam, Christ, who is a life-giving spirit. We've been born again, totally new creation. So in verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, a whole new creation, not regarded according to the flesh anymore, but partaking, as Peter says in 2 Peter 1, verse 3 and 4, but now we partake of the divine nature. Our nature has now changed. We can now put on the new man. So this one new man is the body. We're reconciled to God in one body through the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is the doorway into this new creation, which is the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a whole new creation from the two. No longer 
Do we become part of a natural people, but we are part of a supernatural people, a new creation people, the body of Christ. We are now members of him and we are to be a witness to the world of this reality. We are an alternate community, an alternate society to Babylon, to the way the world works. Because now in Christ, people from all different backgrounds can come together in him and live in peace and show the world what it really looks like. The world, Babylon, divides on race, culture, nationality, skin color. But in Christ, we don't regard each other according to those things because Christ is all and in all. This one new man is part of the awesome apostolic vision that God has for his people. To be a heavenly people living on the earth, a new creation people who are living according to that new creation. And so in verses like Colossians 3 from verses 9 and all the way through to 14, it tells us that we are to put on this new man who is created according to the image of him in knowledge according to the image of him who created us. We are now in the image of him. And we are to put on humility. We're to put on tender mercies. We're to put on love. We're to put on uh, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. That's the new nature. That's the new man. One new man, one corporate new man, an alternate society to the way the world works. So this is a place of maturity to come to. This is a people who are able to lay down their fleshly desires and opinions be reconciled to God in one body. The enmity, the hatred, the animosity, the arguments and the, the argumentativeness is put to death on the cross. Jesus has now made the way for us to live in peace in one body under his headship, under his leadership, under his covering. Now we are covered in Christ, clothed with him. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So this one new man is the people of God. It's the holy nation. It's one body. There is one body. Not two separate peoples of God in the earth, but one body. And it's a new creation body. So the apostolic vision is a new society, a new community of people who follow the head, the Messiah Jesus, together. Not separate ethnic churches, quote, quote, but one new creation man created in Christ Jesus and reconciled together in one body. Amen.